Hi guys, we'll be speaking with Jack Thorne today who's just graduated from Grace School of Art. He studied um, communication design for two years and is originally from Glasgow. Um, we'll be talking about his exhibition work and other projects that will be coming up for him. So for your work, what would be your biggest inspiration for um, most of your work? Um, more recently, it's, it's leaned towards film. It's leaned more towards um, slightly abstract, um, but still coherent um, story based film, really. Uh, David Lynch, I, I'm a big fan of his films because they get weird and they get um, they get kind of abstract and dreamy, but there's still always a coherent plot. Um, a lot of the a lot of the video makers and and Cap, for example, which I, which I used to study. Um, it's very kind of out there um, and it's all about your interpretation. And while I think that's great stuff, um, I, I, I've always been a fan of telling a story, having a story that can be kind of absorbed at face value and then all the weirdness and all the, all the messages and the, the uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, not tone, but uh, subtext, I guess. All of that is, is in there to be read into it if someone wants to take the time and, and to read into it. But I like to just tell a story that kind of anybody could see and read it uh, as such and, and hopefully enjoy it. And then there is a kind of product, if you like, at the top. There is just a story uh, that you absorb and all the all the abstract, weird stuff is, is, is still there, but it's kind of underneath. And it's sort of, you can read into it if you like, I guess. Yeah, it's like when I've seen when I've seen a lot of your um, photographs, I've seen that you used a lot of bright colours with dark black and um, dark backgrounds. Can you explain like what the reason behind that was? Like, why did you use that kind of um, art style? If I mean, yeah. Um, well, the the, the the honest answer is a little bit boring to tell you the truth. It's uh, whenever I've done photography in the past, um, or or filming uh, motion in the past. The best results I seem to have is uh, with that that type of low key lighting, where it's a uh, you know the black background and the uh, subject is illuminating. So really, uh, that was just the starting point. Is uh, I just thought to start there. What um, would be your kind of biggest challenge while completing your work? Um, just working, just working from home from uh, not having the same resources to work with. Uh, that was that was huge for me. I'm working on this like eight nine year old laptop that crashes every time you open a new window and, and all that sort of thing so when you're editing videos especially editing photos all that sort of thing it can uh, get a little frustrating when programs are crashing so that was a big one um it wasn't great being isolated either because uh, it was it was handy to just at a moment's notice the person you're sitting next to your friends and on the course to just say what do you think of this or, or this or that you know, show them two options and very quickly have them just react and say yeah I like that one better and you can go from there and it, and it you don't want to procrastinate when there's a room full of people working hard you, no, yeah. you're sitting on your phone or what have you you kind of look around and you go I, I better start doing something um, maybe everyone's not the same as me but when I'm at home I'm a little bit kind of like what's that over there yeah what's yeah um, so yeah it was it, it I managed to settle in. I think when I've spoken to people, most people agree they, they were able to settle in, but the first week or few days or, or whatever was some time lost, definitely. Mm. Hard to adjust, I would say. Yeah, definitely. It's it's good to get like a second opinion as well on your work because that's the thing that like, you, you feel like, oh, like maybe I could do this better. I need like a second thought in this, you know. Whereas you had that studio space, like I presume you had a studio to work in when you done all this um, mm. kind of work, you know. So it yeah. feels like that, yeah. But um, so did you use any specific techniques well on your work? And if so, what was your favorite technique? Uh well, uh, when we we're filming the the documentary, um. We, we got to experiment a little bit with, with some lighting and uh, I was trying to, that, that same look that's on all of the portraits, mm -hmm. the, the low key uh, dark look, we we're trying to kind of emulate that uh, for the most part, but it was, yeah, it was, it was tricky. That was that was fun. That was fun using some lights and it made us feel quite professional and that sort of thing. I'd say the kind of 
uh, the, the lighting and, and all that sort of thing while we were filming it, it made it feel a bit more uh, professional, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, did you film most of it in Aberdeen or was it just kind of about? Because obviously, no, none, of it, COVID. none of it's filmed uh, here, it's all filmed uh, in Glasgow. Oh, nice, nice. Where about, yes. like, what areas in Glasgow? Sorry. Um, a few scenes uh, were at uh, Ryan's house. Um, mm-hmm. cause that's where his drum kit is. So I just, um, the, the, the band are just people that, that I've known for years. Um, and they're pretty wild and I think. I think very entertaining, so that's why I wanted to, to do the documentary about them. Um, so mm-hmm. yeah, I, there were some there were some scenes filmed even in his house. Uh, the majority of it was filmed uh, on location, the uh, Empire Studio. It's just a little uh, rehearsal studio in the south side of Glasgow. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. everything's a little crazy right now. Nobody's quite sure what they're what they're kind of doing next. Oh uh, yeah, definitely. Um, so. Did you find it kind of um, difficult to complete your work due to the, um, the recent circumstances of COVID-19? Was that your biggest issue or was there other issues involved? Or um, Yeah, just, just working from home, really. Just working mm-hmm. from home. Um, not having access to the same uh, resources as you do. I mentioned like the photography problem. Like, don't have access to models. Don't have access to the photography studios that we have a graze and uh, not having access to the, the way more powerful um, Macs and, and that sort of thing, the mm-hmm. scanners. Um, I, I don't even uh, even own a, a drawing tablet because I would, whenever I needed one, I could, I could borrow one. So I don't actually have one. So all those types of things, it was, there was a lot of small things that, that added up to contributing to being pretty difficult. Yeah, definitely. Um, what else was I going to say? Sorry. Um, yeah, it must be because you've not got that kind of uh, material to work with and it must be really difficult, but obviously you've pulled through and you've managed to make it work, you know, but um, what else have I said? So before, when you were filming the documentary, was this before COVID or was this kind of um, during it? Like, I wasn't too sure. This, yeah, this was right before. Luckily, this was um, it was filmed over four days, I think. Four um, days. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that's the thing is, there's there's a lot of footage that didn't make it in because of time constraints and other reasons. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was about it was about four days, I think, we were shooting for, and luckily it was just right before the lockdown hit. It was um, end of February, start of March, I believe, and then the lockdown kicked in. What? mid late March. Yeah, yeah uh, it was all it was all filmed right before it, and it's, it's a good thing it was because if, if it hadn't been, I don't know what my kind of main project for the year would have been. I would have had. To. Are you? Do you have any plans for any other projects? Any other documentaries you're doing, or are you just kind of focusing on other stuff? Or well, I, I, I want to finish this one because mm-hmm. it, it it just it doesn't really end. It just stops. I want. I, we they were supposed to audition more people. Um, but we only had a limited time, and then when the lockdown hit, like that, that couldn't happen. So I'd like to finish that one really, um, and then other than that, I, I mean, I, I feel like I've emailed every TV and film production company on the planet mm-hmm. uh, while well, the degree shows up saying, "Come look at this and give me a job, uh, please." Basically, because uh, um, yeah, I, I've, uh, I've uh, over the years, you kind of just um, have a lot of ideas that you kind of don't get round to. So I, I mean, I've books full of ideas i'm sure some of them i'll go back to and i'll go what was i thinking there that's a terrible <laughs> idea but some of them uh, some of them i think have potential so it's just a case of find the time find the people and uh, in some cases finding the funding or finding some company 